Hello, my soccer universe, for a look back at the action in the Eredivisie and League 1 last weekend. Or you may call it the Le Classique special in a way, because I'm usually loath in these um, videos to focus only on two clubs. I mean, the ones that I'm probably most, uh, most interested in, which is Ajax and especially PSG. But I always try to branch out a little bit more to the other because they usually get overlooked. However, this video will be mostly about PSG and about all the craziness that has been happening around this club over the past few weeks. And probably we should start right with it. Because suddenly a report surfaced about a week ago where he basically said uh, he's unhappy, he has been treated uh, not quite right, his promises have not been kept. I think we have to say it this way. Promise has not been kept. It was mentioned that he should not play out wide. Uh, no, in the center he wants to play uh, on uh, out and not be the central striker. That Neymar will be gone. Blah blah blah. We already knew that from the international break. Uh, how he was complaining about that and Neymar saying, "Yeah, my relationship with Kylian not good, not not not, not good." And it's just it's just so galling on so many levels. And it came to me that, especially in the 90s and early 2000s in Germany, Bayern Munich were called FC Hollywood because there was all this melodrama going on. It was especially high when, uh, you know, Klinsmann was there, Matthäus were there, they did not like Laeg, like, they were always, well, then Effenberg, of course, came with another big person, and all these personalities were clashing, they were always in the headlines. And that's the same thing at PSG. It is less about building a good team. It is more that, yeah, let's get a collection of players. We get a lot of headlines. We get a, probably a lot of uh, sponsoring revenue because uh, people are attracted to stars. We sell a lot of jerseys. And we say we want to win the Champions League. But honestly, we don't really have a chance because uh, any coach that comes in there has to deal with this kindergarten. And while for the most of the time the fingers were squarely pointed at uh, Neymar, it has been turning and it's not Kylian Mbappé, or Mbaby as I would like to call him, that should take the brunt of all the critic. I mean, first all the drama around his contract extension, then his seemingly U-turn and maybe it could be that PSG, I mean PSG basically offered him uh, the earth for uh, his signature and I'm sure he gets a lot of money for for, uh, for that uh, and promises and yes he has a say in squad planning and he had a say to who is the sporting director all these kind of things power that a player never should have to be honest uh, and what I'm most curious about this entire situation let's say he would have gone to Real Madrid Yes, David Benzema, a striker, this probably would have been the pivot up for him. But would he have made the same trouble if suddenly he had to play the pivot? Because at the moment, Real Madrid would not need a player like him. I mean, let's be uh, honest, because they are very well served with Vinicius Jr. Or, or, or already. So there's a good chance that he would have to move around as well, potentially. But what bugs me the most is, and this is not only on Kylian. Although he has been bugging me, uh, you know, first he has similar theatrics, you know, like the roll on the floor playing and, you know, showing your mood, uh, pop, 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 a little bit like Neymar. I mean, he straight took the pages out of Neymar. I remember after 2018 World Cup, he was uh, hailed as this very um, well-centered, very thoughtful young guy who has, uh, you know, He's doing a lot of charities and he might still do that, but, um, you know, kind of the anti-Neymar in many ways. And now he is turning exactly in a copy of Neymar. It didn't work well for him to work with that guy. And what's even more is that I think that this run to the Champions League final that they had, uh, they did this together, but I think this was because Neymar for once was fit and had his head right was focused and it only fell apart when Bayern actually got to Neymar but up until the ball, I actually think that this was a tri triumph where uh, it was down to that Neymar could hit that next level and he was of course supported very well by Kylian Mbappé 
that Killian then had a big miss in the final. I mean, uh, the one thing that you would expect from a, uh, you know, this striker, this young, he's young, he's allowed to miss. But uh, a true prodigy would actually convert his goals. And, the, and, and that's for me the most uh, important thing that really bugs me in this whole thing uh, is he has actually since that World Cup, he has not achieved much. Not much was down to him personally uh, taking the team back on his shoulder. Yes, I think last season was the first one where I say, this is not Killian's team. But what did they win? They won just the French title. So, you know, mm -hmm. sorry, Ligue 1, but that French title was coming all the way. So in that sense, overall, in no, no, not a career. Then the much, much bigger picture in there is. Yes, the club may have, pro may have promised you a lot of power and that you could have a say in the sports director and you got now uh, a Campos who is uh, uh, to your liking and so on. But after all, you're a player. And a player, whether you like it or not, you play where the coach tells you to play. And yes, you have. And, and this is the, the other thing that probably none of us can really understand. Is it such a punishment to play next to Neymar and Messi, who both of them might not be in the prime of their careers anymore, but arguably these are two of the best footballs over the past decade or decade and a half. Is it really so bad? And you're getting paid a kingly sum. Now, I think part of it is also, and I think the same thing is true for Neymar and Messi. He is managed by his family. And while I don't read French media, because my French is unfortunately now at a rudimentary level, uh, but you know, enough is trickling through to these shores. And I think I have to um, thank Julien Laurent uh, most for that, who, is, uh, who appears on uh, three of my favorite podcasts that I'm listening to. So I think I'm relatively well informed. What really is the promise that all of these players are managed by the family. They don't have an agent for themselves. And so, and I have to say that uh, family Mbappé, or let's call it Mbaby, uh, are really, uh, they don't have the media now, or they like the headlines maybe. And the ridiculousness is that I think almost everyone said there is something behind the statements because PSG didn't flat out refuse it. They just say where the uh, where are those headlines come 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 from. Uh, PSG's coach uh, is already again at the same stage as every other coach at PSG always was, gasping for air. How do we keep this together? This bunch is impossible to uh, to coach. I might have all the greatest ideas in the world, but uh, those three do basically what they want. I cannot control this. And then Killian walks it back. This was never true. What? There's nothing to look at. I was surprised that this came out. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure there's something behind it and now you're not living up to it. So it's, it's an absolute mess. The only thing, maybe positive, is it not all good between Neymar and Mbappé? I'm saying, keeping saying Mbappé, I actually want to hit him with him, baby. <laughs> Because after they celebrated, you know, it's the first assist for uh, from Hick from Killian to Neymar uh, this season. And they embraced afterwards, looked at each other, and then Messi came also there. It is such a soap opera. I have to be keeping, uh, keep telling my wife. I mean, she's not really watching soap opera, but she's just watching TV, so I said, don't watch those TV shows. There is more real life drama happening at PSG than in any that anyone could make up. It is just prime time. Get your popcorn and let's see how this train wreck is gonna happen. And what's what really galls me even more is that both Neymar and Messi have been really outstanding this season. Neymar especially. And. I also think that Killian is really, really bugged that there's this Holland guy up in Manchester grabbing all the headlines where he is has to play second fiddle uh, to Neymar and Messi, at least in his mind. Uh, he is not having the greatest season. There's a World Cup coming and so I have been, I mean, inside of me and I, I end this rant very, very soon inside of me. 
I'm thinking what I would I would really like to see not love to see like to see Killian injures himself cannot play at the World Cup but France wins despite him that should be a humbling experience for him that I think he needs some humbling he needs to eat and I said this with Barcelona I keep come, come, up, come up with the humble pie and Every week I'm watching PSG because it is really fun to watch them. There is a Messi in there that plays great. There is a Neymar who, who, who plays great, who I barely can stand. And Kylian is also getting in the barely can stand category. So yeah, but the big one is for, for Visa. Is it not all good between those two who have such a troubled past? Of course, not all are as good because Neymar now also has to face uh, potential criminal char charges for fraud. Uh, at the Barcelona court where he could even walk to jail. So, let's see. Any case, enough preamble. Uh, uh, let's look at the Eredivisie, I, I would say. Where, you know, it was not a, uh, a super weekend, but we had a rather decisive result for Feyenoord, uh, who basically packed down the league leaders at Z so far, whereas the other uh, two big favorites got rather impressive wins. And that's where we want to start. Here are the results from the Eredivisie from the last weekend. And you can see, I mean, uh, results that stick out. I mean, Vitesse, who have not been good, winning 3 0 Cambur, maybe a turnaround there. PSV 6 1 against Utrecht. I mean, PSV is, if they get rolling, they get rolling and score tons of goals. Uh, fun, fun, funny thing is, it was 1 1 after 20, 20, 24 minutes, but then it was 3 1 at the half. And it ends in a 6-1. Uh, uh, Simons uh, scored two. Uh, Teal scores two. And then El Ghazi scored, uh, scored also two. So uh, <laughs> three double scorers. Um, I'd say against Fener was a really, really tight duel. Uh, where it was more or less uh, who makes the first mistake or who gets the first uh, breakthrough. And it was really that the first breakthrough came from Aad. That where Utgard could um, head it in from close range, even above Trauner. However, uh, shortly after, they give a penalty, Kirkchi makes it even. And so it goes in the second half level, and Shimanski gets then again a goal that, uh, you know, gets a wicked deflection. Goal he cannot, is a little bit uh, mispositioned, mis 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 so wasn't looking good. But at that moment, Feyenoord had already square control of that game, and they crowned the, the, the game with a brilliant goal by Danilo, far out, right up in the corner. It's an absolute... Beauty, 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 beauty. So biggest win for Feyenoord for sure. However, uh, just by scoring, it's Ajax. 7-1. Uh, it was 7-0 in the 81st, you know, in the nine, in the 90th. Uh, Excelsior pulled one back. Again, I think I really like the Excelsior kit over black shirts, red pants. Looks good. But, you know, Sanchez, Berghoes, Probe, uh, twice. Uh, Tadic, Berghwein, Kudus. Sharing the wealth. That's what Ajax is, is doing. We have in three weeks uh, coming, we have the big match between those top two. So at the moment in the Eredivisie, um, it's now a Z fell out of, the, uh, is, not taught, is not top anymore. It's still very tight, but Ajax, PSV and Feyenoord are now uh, on top. And it's pretty, pretty much that's the ranking that you would expect. But we have four up top and then it's a uh, few that go for the European spots. And on the bottom, it's also relative time, but it's more or less goes in tiers in the area. The Vizier uh, and expected standings, uh, as I said, it will end this way. It's even the 20 is a, is a tad above the rest. It's more than interesting who will get into this uh, Conference League playoffs. Um, I give you here for the next two weeks. I know in three weeks is Ajax PSV, so I probably will have to do a video there. I might do just a um, specialized video on that. But um, I see here uh, next weekend, it's all winnable games with Groningen and PSV, probably the standard tie. And then the week after, um, you know, normal, not too long ago, Ajax Vitesse would, would have been a really good game. But where Vitesse are, it's actually not that great. Going over to League uh, um, Lille, big win in Strasbourg. Lille maybe getting something going now. Lorient cannot get a win, and that's despite playing om almost the entirety of the second half with uh, a man more. It was a harsh sending off for Lopi. 
and then even uh, uh, Reims going down another man in the 91st minute but Lorient cannot find the breakthrough uh, a little bit of a downer for them but still the season is really really bright for them uh, Promenudi promoted uh, to lose a 3-2 against Auger is also no notable uh, loss of course getting a win Nice cannot get anything going again 1-1 not Coming back from the 4-0 defeating to Fry Freiburg, uh, beating uh, Brest, who now seemingly are uh, finally running out of luck and going down. Uh, the big one uh, outside of the, uh, the Le Classique is, of course, Rennes against Lyon. First game in charge for Laurent Blanc after six years being not into coaching. And that, to me, is a little bit um, a weird one. Um, I think the last one he was coaching PSG, that he didn't pick up any other job, I find this rather odd. But you know, he didn't really solve Lyon's pro uh, problems. Although, like I said, scores two, gives uh, Ren uh, gives Lyon a lead. But Terrier uh, equalizes just just before the Guerri after the half before it's an uh, equalized. But then within five minutes, Terrier had it already packed back for Ren. Ren looking to become one of uh, is really at the moment set to be one of the. Um, a top four teams in France where Monaco should be in there but if you cannot win at home to, against Clermont Foot you don't really belong in the calm conversation um, and then of course PSG against uh, our OM I said already assist uh, Mbappé to Neymar but honestly that game should have ended if this would have ended 4-2 it would have been far more representative of what uh, was happening on, on the pitch. I was watching that game together with the Verona-Milan game. And I have to say, this one had me gripped. It was, you know, I, I was just listening to Verona-Milan, but I was watching mostly uh, that, that game. It was really gripping stuff. Um, it was a lot. It was even in the sense that Marseille did not hide themselves and they had periods, especially in, at the beginning of the second half, where they really were threatening. However, PSG created more chances and it was in many ways similar to what PSG did against Lyon, where um, they just got one goal, but it should have been more honestly. But Donnarumma had to make a few saves. Messi hit the crossbar with a free kick uh, again. I mean, he finds his best friend in France uh, more and more often. But in the end, I think it was a fully deserved win. And of course, there had to be a red card in there as well for Gigo, who just, <laughs> uh, just skyed down uh, <laughs> uh, Neymar. Uh, it was, I think it was an honest tackle, but the way he, he got him, there was only one way for the ref. Uh, emotions going at that moment high with uh, OM players wanting to pull up Neymar. Um, I have to say though, uh, as critical as I am of Neymar for lying around, I think most of the time that he was lying down, I think once he got stepped on the hand, that must hurt a lot. Yes, he's embellishing. We all know that, but I think overall uh, it was uh, it was not as bad as it could have been. I think he toned it as crazy as it is out, he toned it down despite Marco van Basten's comments, which again ties the two uh, le leagues together. So with all that, Lorient not winning, PSG winning the big one. Um, PSG have now a three-point lead. I think this is the point where we say that PSG, thank you, you have won the league. Uh, unless you have a uh, breakdown of epic proportions, loss keeping in there. Lorient also I means still the second spot. Uh, two teams that I probably should get a jersey uh, off for sure. Um, OM and Ren kind of back there. And I think OM and Ren will probably finish second and third. I don't trust Monaco quite yet. Uh, gotta say, and I don't know what to tell you about Lyon. I think Lyon at the moment a very average team. I would wish that Laurent Blanc can turn them around. I just have my doubts. And on the bottom, it's carnage. Because, you know, four are going down. Uh, expect the standings tells you as much as I said. Uh, PSG, OM and Rennes, Monaco moving a little bit down. As I said, I really have a hard time telling uh, how real Monaco are. I mean, they could go on a tear again like they did at the end of last season. I also give it the last two rounds, um, the next two rounds. We have a really intriguing OM against Lens matchup. Uh, Garda say PSG against Ajax, so could be a hot one. And then we have Lille against Monaco. Potentially, maybe, maybe. 
So the, the also the two uh, standout uh, ties, I think, from that week and then the week after. You know, Lyon is still a big name, but Lyon against Lille seems like this was a great duel a few a, a few seasons ago. Um, when I look Lorient Nice, that could that is probably more interesting to me. And of course, Rennes is a team that I'm also watching. Uh, you know, always having an eye on them on their performances. So in any case, I was a lot of PSG in there, but I just needed to talk more about this Kylian Mbappe thing because within one minute. I can get something done, but I I really need to, you know, there needs to be more added because this story has so many layers. In any case, please let me know what you thought about all that. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.